Hi, it's Detangler with the Daily Detangler talking to you about expectations. What do you think I'm going to talk about when I say expectations? Hmm, what do I mean by expectations? What's your expectation of this very detangler? Do you have one? Just curious if you do. When I talk about expectations, there's many different perspectives that people have. We've been talking a lot about perspectives, but on the team, I'm I'm obviously thinking about and and seeing how people interact. When people are talking about expectations uh, inside the clients that we're working with, they oftentimes have expectations about the type of data they're going to have access to, or they're going to have expectations about the information they may need in order to, you know, make a decision or to take action, or they may have a a, a need to understand an approach uh, and have expectations about the approach that needs to be taken before they'll sign off on it or before they'll engage. They need to understand that whole approach. Or they're going to need to think about or maybe agree with uh, how hard or how easy something is and whether or not they quote unquote have time. Uh, And based on that, their expectation forms. And when you have complexity and ambiguity, that those expectations can really surface, can't they? Especially when it comes to people working together. So what's working on our team when we talk about confronting expectations or leveraging uh, expectations to move us forward? Well, the first thing is reflection, getting a fresh perspective. The second one is framing out what's really happening and asking the right questions. And the third is actually engaging. Uh, There's a whole different perspective when you engage and the expectations you have when you're engaging or when you're put on the hook to produce something are completely different than when you're perhaps providing feedback. So let's talk about each. Well, what works when it comes time to reflect or ref- or to uh, think about uh, what's happening? Well, there's different expectations that people have. For example, when you will go and buy a car, uh, you can think about whether or not it costs the right amount of money. So you have many expectations about cost. You also might have expectations about how structured something should be or how logical it is or how efficient something should be, or who's accountable for what, or perhaps even overall, whether or not you like it, just period. Whether you like it or not, that's an expectation. Also, uh, alternatives. What type of alternative really exists? When we're talking about, for example, engaging in a new way of uh, figuring out how to go to customer, what alternative is there? Well, going to market, which we've already determined and we've decided is wrong and we've burned the ships. So what expectations do we have other than to move forward? Uh, But yet when we talk to to our customers and our clients, what alternatives do they have? Well, actually, status quo is a huge expectation, isn't it? Uh, A lot of what we probably struggle with is this idea of let's just do what we've always done. Or, you know, why should I bring somebody else in to do it? Because that will admit or perhaps show that I might not know what I'm doing. The other part of this, the third part, is reflecting on the disconnects. Uh, Disconnects are going to happen, but you can turn those into positives by focusing on uh, were you timely, were you providing something that's of the right quality for somebody to action, and then uh, is it relevant to what's really going on. These are things that we do really well on the team, especially in the context of the day-to-day flow. Working in flow versus trying to catch up three, four, five days later is really important to meeting the expectations that we have of each other as we move forward. So speed is a big expectation that our catalyst has, for example. Another thing that works is framing out. Framing out what we're really talking about, framing out why something happened, framing out why uh, we are learning what we're learning, and then maybe even providing clarity around what it means to the customer. Uh, I was talking to uh, Nick, as you guys know, um, at Mimecast, and Uh, I was asking him, you know, hey, uh, what else do you need to help make the decision? And he said, well, this is really interesting, Brian. Uh, The data we have or the information we have is is perfect. I mean, we don't need any more information in order to move forward with go to customer. In fact, um, you know, I think I have access to the right people and the people want to do it. They're saying they want to do it. And um, the challenge I'm having is AGI is in here and they're They've got their project plans. They've got their, here's who we need. Here's all the milestones. Here's all the deliverables. And it's this huge fanfare of an initiative that's sucking up everybody's time. 
Um, and because of that, there's no bandwidth to even engage you guys. And you've got, you're going to have us on a 90-day clock. How do we reconcile that? The expectation of the organization is another fanfare, another balloon drop, shooting off the confetti. We're going to come in and need to talk to you know, 20, 30, 40 people. We'll have milestones. We'll have deliverables. We'll have reviews. We need inputs. We need all this from you. We need data. We need information. And that's the AGI approach. Our approach is completely different. But how do we explain that? In fact, um, Nick even said, uh, well, this is what's comfortable. I know it's left path. I know it's all about the way it's been done. In fact, the people I'm talking to, Alex, Braden, and Dino, believe that too. Uh, it's just how do we explain this and how do we take the leap? How do we take the leap? So all is not lost. Um, he knows it's a thing. Uh, he knows the expectations of the organization are going to be to load up the bus and, and uh achieve the uh, initiative and launch it with great fanfare. He's got a meeting tomorrow with Alex, uh, sending him the webinar link uh, to go over the routes to value webinar. Alex is on board, but Alex doesn't have a lot of bandwidth. Uh, everybody's on board. They just don't have bandwidth for this big uh, initiative. And also, um, even though our initiative doesn't require a lot of them, they just have to react or they're just going to react. There's still this expectation of uh, are we going to be able to do both? Are we going to be able to handle the AGI work plus what we're doing? Are we going to be able to actually, do we need to sequence this in at a certain point? All this, in, uh, instead of engaging and going, let's go, let's do it. Uh, it's this idea of, uh, it, it's an unknown, we're not quite sure. Which leads me to another uh, example, and, and uh, it'd be interesting to think about uh, this. Uh, I want to show you a clip here and think about how you might frame out an argument or some logic or some expectations or pass information to these people. First time I ever heard about the flat earthers was I think when I was in space last. I can't, I can't believe, believe I'm talking about this. I was well versed in just about every conspiracy you can think of. Chemtrails, 9-11. Did you know they made up dinosaurs? I completely solved the JFK assassination, which I'll share with you in a different day. And then Mark said that he was a member of the Flat Earth Society. And I said, oh, Mark, what are you on to now? This. This is what it is. Excuse me, anyone ever told you the Earth is flat? I caught his smile and he wasn't buying it. Nobody wants to admit that they've been fooled, but it's happened to every one of us. If you look on Google Trends, it's like spike. There's now flat earth dating sites. I mean, we've got songs. Why is it expanding the way it is? Right. And online, you'll see so-called evidence that seems scientific, and you go, huh, maybe they're onto something there. Science is having a problem combating what we're doing because they don't know how to address it. I want to believe this. This doesn't mesh with reality, so don't change my view, change reality. Now we're doing an international conference. It's okay to believe all this is really happening. In a conference, we want to prove there's no curvature. And if we can do that, it's game over. Can we get to the point where it's acceptable? So that's the Netflix documentary, Behind the Curve. And it's interesting. How would you engage these people, these folks who are Flat Earth Society members, and how would you engage them to shape their perspective or change their perspective? Um, th how would you frame out the uh, discussion? And uh, they flat out reject the science. So how would you find a different way to engage them? Have you ever thought about that? Uh, what if somebody's so set in their way, how might you actually help them through and see things your way and have a discussion? Um, so understanding the expectations of others, uh, I think we do that really well on the, on the team. The challenge will be as we ripple out, right? So how do we ripple this out? How do we stay focused on something that we're doing that's so new without all of the, the people on the other side, the, the left pathers, so to speak? If we're right pathers and they're left pathers, uh, we believe the earth is round. They believe the earth is flat and there's more of them. It's flipped, you know, um, the, the left pathers, let's say they're all everybody. 99% of the world believes the world, the world is uh, flat and we believe the world is round. How would we go about that? And how would we help people understand? We would have to engage and we'd have to help them engage others. So well, that, this has to do with uh, principle number six, which is orchestrating. And when you think about the people, the information, the technology, and the process required uh, to drive a new way of engaging customers, 
and to drive more empathy and clarity and purpose and uh, direction to uh, the, the customers that IQVIA is dealing with, for example, to be more relevant to the, the pharmaceutical companies that they're engaging. Uh, how are they going to do that? And well, they're going to have to be an orchestrator. That means uh, having the right type of focus and also the right type of collaboration to drive cohesion. So what does any of this discussion have to do with what we're doing as a team? Well, when you think about people and process, that's oftentimes the approach that, that somebody takes to the work. And when you think about the approach that somebody takes to the work, it's really interesting. Uh, you, they might be taking a completely different approach than you would. So if you have an expectation about an approach and they have an expectation about an approach and the process and the steps in which to go through it, you may have uh, to talk about the expectations here. Uh, the expectation speed versus quality, for example. Uh, if you talk about um, the overall view of information, uh, what is real information? What is reality even? The flat earthers, what, it's very real to them. It's not even up for debate. It's their definition of reality. How would you uh, talk through that? And, and that's, that's part of being heroic. And that's how, part of about driving change is helping people through that. And then what does it mean to enable something with technology? Um, you know, when you're talking about pipeline or you're talking about filling the top of the funnel, the technology there versus the technology for strategic accounts, think about all the expectations that exist there. So I wanted to share this expectations detangler because it's important to think about these scenarios and it's important to understand there's likely going to be patterns that will repeat themselves over and over again. The good thing about it, just like our salespeople were helping, uh, these patterns are knowable and these patterns can be worked through because you can have a, an approach to talk through them. So I encourage you to take time and, and, and understand those patterns and also talk to others and engage with others to think through how these expectations might surface. Thanks so much for your time. This has been The Detangler. I'll see you on the next one.